For this demonstration, we're going to show you how to calibrate a PC over the network. So you'd be running Calman on a separate machine, and then you'd be calibrating a PC monitor on a separate machine. We're going to connect to it over the network. So this is our monitor advanced calibration workflow, and we're going to select networked computer, target operating system windows, and single monitor. We're going to hit next. Now we're going to connect to pattern source, which is going to be client 3. We're going to connect to our machine here. Now that we're, it's connected up here, we're going to go to next. And then we're going to connect to client 3 on the machine as the display as well. We're going to select our machine, hit connect again. Go to next. Now it's time to connect our meter. I have it plugged in to the USB port on the machine running Calman. I'm going to hit find meter, then hit search. For the meter mode, we're going to select white LED. Hit next. We're calibrating this to sRGB color space and gamma and a D65 white point which is our default. That's the most common calibration target for a PC monitor. Now we're going to do our pre-calibration measurements to show you what the display was before we calibrated it. And we're going to use this data to give you a before and after at the end of the calibration process. I'm going to hit read series. This will take just a minute or two, so we'll come back after it's done. Now that our pre-calibration measurements are done, we'll go on to the next page. We are calibrating a laptop over the network, so it does not have a contrast control. This page is for checking and make sure you're, we're not getting any clipping. Now normally you would use the contrast control on an external monitor to reduce the contrast if you were getting any clipping. The PC that we're calibrating over the network is a laptop, it does not have those controls. I will show you what the measurements look like and explain it a little bit just in case you're calibrating a desktop machine. Now what we're looking for is any plateauing. So all these pretty much keep going up and to the right. The yellow line is the target. It doesn't matter that there's separation here. We're going to calibrate that out at a later step. But essentially we don't want to see one red, green, or blue going up and then like plateauing off say like this that would tell us that we're getting clipping in the in the highlights so if you were using a desktop monitor that did have a contrast control you would reduce the contrast read it again and see if that goes away if you, if you turn the contrast way down and you don't see the plateauing go away then it, it's just inherent in the monitor and you can't really do anything about it I'm gonna go to next this is a two-point white balance page this again really only applies to desktop monitors, external monitors, not built into laptops. I'll show you what the graphs look like. So this is showing us there's way too much blue, which from the previous screen is very evident. What you would do in a desktop monitor is use its RGB gains and offsets or just single point RGB control to balance this out before we do the rest of the calibration. And essentially you want red, green, and blue all lined up with 100 right here. So you would just reduce the, the blue in the RGB control until they were all even at 100. So like I said again, this doesn't apply to our laptop that we're calibrating. I just thought I would explain it a little bit just in case you're doing um, an external uh, monitor on a desktop machine or an external monitor on a laptop. Now we're going to check our luminance. It's at 160. I usually do like 150 in an office environment. If you're in a really bright area, then you might want to do it a little bit higher. So I'm going to reduce the luminance on this particular display. Okay, I went a little bit further than I wanted, so I'm going to go back up one, one notch on the backlight control. And on almost all LCD uh, displays the backlight control 
is what controls the overall luminance. On some desktop monitors, they might label it brightness instead of backlight. Dell, for example, does that. And it's not like a brightness control on a TV, which controls the black level. Most computer monitors, when they have a brightness control, it's actually controlling the backlight. So I'm going to go to next. This is where we're going to do our calibrate our 1D lookup table that is stored in the video card. It's also known as a gamma table in the video card. And what this is going to do is this is going to calibrate our grayscale, white point, and the gamma curve. So now I'll click on the AutoCal button and hit OK, and it will run through its AutoCal process. This will take a few minutes, so we're going to come back after it's done. Okay, now that we've calibrated uh, our grayscale 1D LUT, it probably has reduced the luminance. So I'm going to read the what our peak luminance is again and adjust it from there. So it came down a little bit, so I'm probably going to go back up one level on the backlight. Okay, I'm going to stop there. That's a good number. So now we're going to create an ICC profile. The process we've been using is Client 3 is acting as both the pattern generator and as the display profiler or let's say calibration manager and what the, that's what loads the calibration file every time you boot up your machine. So now we're going to create that ICC profile that's going to be loaded when you boot up the, your machine and essentially it's going to characterize what the actual measurements of the display are. So then ICC aware applications and the operating system can do the proper color transforms to display the content correctly based upon what the content was mastered, what uh, color space it was mastered at. So we're going to hit our AutoCal button, hit OK, and it's going to measure the primaries and the grayscale. This will take just a minute or two, so we'll come back after it's done. Now our ICC profile creation process is complete. Hit OK. Now you can see our primaries are definitely not on target. Essentially the 100% saturated red, green, and blue, those cannot be fixed. Those are just inherent on what the physics of the display is. But with those in the ICC profile, we will be able to have the operating system or ICC aware apps correct what's inside the color gamut. Obviously, we're not going to be able to recover this part of the gamut or this edge that's being sliced off. But anything inside of these three primaries will be corrected. Now we go to our verification page. This data has been pulled from our pre-calibration measurement page. And now we're going to do a read series and measure our after calibration results. This is going to take a few minutes, so we'll be back after it's complete. Now that our post calibration measurements are complete, you can see our grayscale error is 0.59 delta E, and our color checker is 1.7. Most of that error number, this is the average, are coming from our undersaturated primaries that are off, and that shows up in the secondaries as well this magenta and that cyan is off. We've fixed a lot of the stuff inside what the gamut of the display is, but we can't fix the fully saturated red, green, or blue because that's just the physics of the display. Next, we can go to our color comparator page. and We can see what it was before and after. These were our pre-calibration measurements versus the targets, and this is the post-calibration measurements versus the targets. This is the grayscale results. and this is for the color checker. If we were doing a second monitor on the same machine, we would essentially start the process over again, but when we went and selected our Client 3 Display Profiler, we would go here, and then there would be a second monitor in this list that we would select, and, and essentially we would have to move our meter to the other monitor, and it would output the patterns from Client 3 on that monitor, and then it would calibrate the gamma table and the ICC pro profile for that monitor. So you would select that here if there was a second monitor connected.